today we are doing an inking tutorial and it just so happens to be a comic inking tutorial. I know many of you have requested comment comic content. Now, unfortunately, a lot of my comic production materials are packed up and ready to go to New Orleans with me for my Nokas Fest panel. But um, I, <laughs> I do have a few that aren't packed up and I'm going to be inking this with um, some uh, some sort of unusual, for the most part, materials, um, mostly as a test for myself, but the principles I'm gonna talk to you guys about are going to be valid regardless of what you're inking with. So right now, we're gonna start with uh, borders, and you're gonna want a ruler, ideally a clear one, um, but this is a 24 inch ruler, so it'll be good for ruling out all four sides, and I also have a small ruler for ruling out the, the borders, and I'm going to ink the the panel borders with a large calligraphy pen and a smaller one. And the sizes, in case you guys are curious, are 3.0 and 5.0. And I think they are both water-based. So um, I am unfortunately not going to color this page for you guys live. I was gonna do that digitally anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and get started by doing the exterior panel borders. And unfortunately, my work surface is both messy and small. So hopefully you will have a cleaner work surface than I do. And nice artist rulers have two surfaces. They have an inking edge like this, which has a bit of metal protruding, and that's for use more so with nibs and um, brushes. And then they have this edge here, which is sort of like the normal ruling edge. And we're just gonna use that edge for ruling our borders. And you actually want to align your ruler on the outside of the panel border, like so. And I do apologize that my camera is not particularly zoomed in. And it's okay if you overshoot. Um, you can always wipe that out later. It's better to overshoot and correct your mistake than to try and go back and make it bigger. And we're working with some blue lines I printed using my Canon Pro 9000 Mark II. It is a water-based printer, although in this instance, the only reason that matters is because a toner might form a resist with the inks that we're gonna be putting down. And I'm gonna square those corners up at the end when we're completely finished with our page and I'm doing other corrections. And if you get streaky lines like this, it is okay to go over them again until you get a clean line. Now the reason we used a calligraphy pen was because it gives us that nice thick border immediately. You don't have to go over it several times. So it's really a handy tool to have. Next, we're going to use the clear ruler because it's gonna make it easier to line things up and the smaller pen. And for this, I'll try to zoom in for you guys. Now, if you wanna use something a little bit smaller for some of these interior panels, you can go ahead and grab something like a 0.1 bullet nib and I might have to hunt around for one of those. And I do apologize again that I'm slightly off camera. Unfortunately, the layout of my desk and this size media, not exactly conducive. Let's see if I have anything else that will work. This graphic might work. Oh, I have a graphic three apparently. Sometimes I forget what I have because I have a lot of different things. And a point eight if it's working. So let's quickly do a test just to make sure because you don't want to find out something's broken when you're trying to ink with it. All are working, perfect. 
Now, the real problem with the water-based inks is they can be a little bit prone to smearing, so if you have sweaty hands, you want to be really careful. And I just try to keep my hands, in general, off the paper and clean as much as possible, because um, even if you think your hands are clean, they have oils on them. And don't you don't ever really want to um, eat something and then begin inking without cleaning your hands. I know some of you guys are rolling your eyes because that's a duh, but you wouldn't believe how many people will get like gross food stains all over their work. And calligraphy pens like these are probably not great for calligraphy, but they are great for borders. And Sakura does make some. They make, um, hang on a second, they make the graphics in one millimeter bullet point, two millimeter, which I believe is a chisel nib, and three millimeter, which for sure is a chisel nib. And these are Copic and waterproof. And they might make bigger ones as well. I'm just not familiar with them. And this three and that three are actually the same size. I think I was hoping for a two. Unfortunately, I am off the table. And one more border. And we're gonna ink that with one millimeter. Okay, so that is all of our panels bordered. And these are the materials I just used. I used a one millimeter graphic, a three millimeter graphic, a 0.8 millimeter, a five millimeter calligraphy, and a three millimeter calligraphy. So I'm gonna give this an opportunity to dry and kind of cure, and then I'll check in with you guys and we can start working on pencils and inks. All right, guys, a few hours have passed. So now I'm gonna move on to tightening some of my roughs up with a pencil. And I recommend you use a harder lead, mostly because a softer lead will be more difficult to erase and may leave streaking. So if you have circular objects like that earth, there are, of course, a few different tools you can use to help you tighten that up. Grabbing them, protractor. I guess it's actually a type of compass. I have three over here. If I need, I'll just grab the whole thing. Because this, this one got stuck. But we're going to go with, oh, this one has a tiny mechanical pencil in it and I put some blue lead in it. But we're gonna go ahead and go with this one and we're going to adjust it. Now you would need to put a pin in one like this. You can't really just easily use your finger. So maybe instead I should grab this one instead which does benefit from a pen, but if you don't have a pen, you can just hold it tight with your finger. And then for the teensy one, you really do kind of want a pen because I can't hold it and use the inside ring, which is where all the tiny ones are. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up not all, but most of the planets. Even though in my inks, I'm not actually going to use the compass. So see, Ninth grade geometry is important if you're an artist. Can't say so much for algebra two or trig, 
but geometry, yes. So I'm going to continue and continue tightening these panels and I'll fix the angle so you guys can better check it out. And I'm gonna do this in time-lapse. I didn't pencil every single element on the page. I was selective about elements that particularly needed some tightening up or might need, it, might need a little further information regarding their texture or maybe they just didn't, I, I didn't handle them as well as I should have in the rough stages. Now, some people refer to this as tight pencils and some people just refer to this as pencils and not everybody will print out these blue lines like I did. Um, the blue lines are really just meant to serve as a guide. You can sketch it in with non-photo blue pencil if that's easier for you. You can print them uh, using your computer and I have a tutorial here on the channel. It's just sort of a very brief overview of how I do that. Um, and hopefully if you've never done it before, you'll find it worth your time. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to begin inking in earnest. Now, like I said, most of my inking supplies are packed and I don't really feel like getting everything unpacked, um, only to have to clean and dry and pack them again. So I'm going to use some unconventional inking materials that I had planned on testing anyway. I'm actually going to use fountain pens, including a Jinhao uh, X750 that I modified to hold a G nib. Now, many of the principles that I'm going to cover in terms of 
how we approach inking are gonna remain the same regardless of what materials I use. So if you're more comfortable using brushes or if you're more comfortable using technical pins or whatever, um, hopefully you can see the similarities in the different, um, in between the, the different mediums and in what I'm trying to explain to you guys. So I'm just sort of casually tightening things up just a little bit more and then I will begin inking. So let me introduce you guys to the somewhat odd assortment of supplies we're going to be using today. We have a modified Jinhao 750 with a uh, Tachikawa G nib in. We have a Noodler's Noodler's Flex with the standard Flex nib in there. And both of these are using fountain pen ink and they are both using um, platinum carbon ink. We are also going to use a brush pen for the lettering. We're going to use a Pintel pocket brush or this Pintel brush for the fills. And I guess as things come up, we will augment them as we need them. So I am going to start out with the Jin Hao, mostly because it mimics how a brush, I mean, how a um, G-nib should handle for the most part, enough for demonstration purposes. So this panel and this panel over here, they're both going to get a splatter fill, but that's not until this project is pretty much finished. See these variations in the line I put down, that would be the line weight. And it's very difficult and kind of annoying to get that with a technical pen. I do apologize. This working surface is just too tiny for an 11 by 17 piece of Bristol, which is what I'm inking on today. And the fountain pen does want to grab it a little bit. All right. So we're going to go ahead and fill that area in with black. I'll just grab Let's see if that works. It's running awful dry today. So I guess I will grab one of the Pintel pocket brushes so I converted into an eyedropper conversion pen. I'll use that instead. And if you, want, if you make a mistake, you need to wait until the end to make corrections. So you're just gonna have to be patient. I know for some of us, it's pretty maddening to just leave it like that. But if you go ahead and you apply your white out now, there's a good chance it'll become dirty. There's a greater chance it'll become dirty when you try to erase your graphite because it'll smear onto your um, whatever you're using for corrections. It's really just best to wait until the end. And then this panel gets a solid black fill. And this would be much easier if I were using a brush and just dipped it into a bottle of ink. So if you have those handy, I recommend you just go ahead and do that. And you see how my brush wants to leave sort of like that unfilled, um, gray pattern. It might, it might be visible as gritty, you guys, but it's really the black ink skipping parts of the white watercolor paper. Um, that is typically known as dry brush. And in the right circumstance, it can be quite a desired effect. And it's why many people do prefer to use a textured paper. This isn't actually watercolor paper. This is vellum Bristol, but it does have a tooth. And tooth is that textured um, feeling on the surface of the paper. So toothy papers 
tend to absorb the ink quicker, so the dry time is shorter, but it tends to be harder to do a solid fill. Now we're gonna work some Photoshop tweaking magic to make sure that every, all of our blacks end up the same amount of black and not this sort of patchy gray color that we've got. And you might wanna allow that area to fully dry before you put your hand on it because it's still quite damp. And um, if you put your hand on it right away, it will just smear or your hand will kind of pick it up and it'll smear. And as you're inking, you should rotate the paper as necessary to best facilitate your drawing needs. Something else you guys need to take into consideration, because I sure didn't seem to, is that fountain pen ink is very prone to bleeding. So this is much splotchier than what you're gonna get if you ink with pretty much literally anything else. You're often going to see me switch between panels inking tools and um, just methods of handling the ink. Um, and that is because I'm allowing certain areas to dry and still continuing to work. I am getting some massive bleeding problems with this. I will probably have to re-ink this if I ever want to use it for anything. However, if I'd ink this on Bristol, if I'd had any Bristol, I'm completely out of Bristol. If I'd ink this on Bristol, ugh, I'm not even on camera. You guys, I'm sorry. If I'd ink this on plate Bristol instead of vellum Bristol, um, it wouldn't be bleeding as badly because plate has a clay finish on it. So see, even when I apply very fine lines, they end up bleeding and getting fat and blotchy and unattractive. All right, that's that with the fountain pen. Honestly, I'm really tired of it bleeding everywhere. So, for on this paper, that's a no. I'm gonna grab one of my old standbys, the Kuratake Fudego Kochi, and see if we can't have a better time of it. Because I refuse to make something that I just absolutely cannot use. So this is actually a brush pen, but it's got a very tiny brush that is made from like a rubber foam.
All right, guys, let's take a moment to discuss what we've done. So I switched away from the fountain pen because it was just having too many issues with this paper. And that's the sort of thing that it's really good to know that now because I can move on and I don't have to make that mistake again. Rather than trying to fight with it or force myself to use a material that just wasn't working for me, I shifted over to something I knew would work. Now the vellum paper is harder if you're using technical pens, food aid pens, fountain pens, those sort of things because it does have enough texture that it's going to catch the pen and drag it with you. So if you are using a textured paper, that is something you're gonna wanna be aware of. As you can see, I've started adding in textures to help give um, not only some idea of what the forms are, but also to um, add a little bit of grayscale and visual interest. I also ink the characters first and then ink the background afterwards. And you want to do that um, because you want to save your hand, basically. You want to save your hand for the things that are the most important and usually the characters are the most important. So I stopped on this panel when we were entering the background. And even if you are a busy webcomic artist, um, you want to take the time to add in the little details that will make your environments look lived in. So like the knobs on the stove, and the burners. Of course, these inks are heavier than most of you would use if you were doing a webcomic. This is more... Um, if I were doing it for black and white reproduction. You may want to bump up the outline on your main character if they're blending in too much to the background. Um, another thing you can do to pop your character out of the background is to add heavier shadows or more spot blacks on them. You can also use texture to denote shading, like I'm doing here on the house, by adding a brick pattern. Now I'm not really liking how those little windows in the front are looking. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to hold off on them and come back to them later and either completely change how I'm handling them or fill them in again with white. But I will continue inking the rest of the windows. Alright, so next we need to do this cookie smell. And by varying our line weight a little bit from thin to thick, we can make it look a little more like vapor and a bit more ethereal. And 
I'm not really going for realistic planet Earth. I just want it to read as sort of Earth, if that makes sense. So, if you want to denote spot blacks for later, you make an X in all the areas where you want that spot black to be. And um, if you're coming from the manga side of things, that's referred to as beta. And some speed lines. And we're gonna want a really bold outline on this, which is a little bit hard to do because I can't easily, I can't smoothly drag this pen on this textured paper. So that's something you're gonna wanna be aware of. There's much more drag resistance on vellum. In fact, more so than watercolor paper because I ain't got watercolor paper a lot. I got that nice thick outline and that's gonna pop that UFO into the foreground. And we'll mark our spot, spot blacks on here as well. And you can save those for when you're finished if you like. That can be the last thing because sometimes spot black takes a really long time to dry. So you may want to wait until the end to do it. And I am working really cartoony. So this dirt almost looks like clouds. It's, it's very simplistic dirt. And that's going to be spot black as well. And the door he's getting out of. I'm drawing some smoke from his entry into the Earth's atmosphere. And it's pretty much just very lightly drawn in squiggly lines. That are gonna break up any line art, no matter how heavy that comes across it. some wreck damage to the front of that UFO. Now we're going to ink our main character and her cat in silhouette. So we're going to do the outline first because it's easier than trying to fill and be neat about the outline. We're gonna leave a slight halo. Let me zoom in. See that halo around the cat's ear? And I'll go ahead and fill this to demonstrate what it's gonna look like. Actually, I want the eye drops black. And now we're going to outline her. And with silhouettes, you really want to keep things simple and readable. And something that actually helps sell it as, as smoke is lightly drawing through it. Like it's semi-opaque. And I actually don't like the size of the panes in that window. So I'm going to break them up a little bit. You see me not using a straight edge for my um, 
my long straight lines. And that's mostly because this is just a demonstration for you guys. But I recommend that if you want neater, better um, straight lines, you really should use a straight edge, at least when you're sketching them out. Oh, of course, my camera's light decided to turn on. And I apologize if I accidentally get off camera. So we are on our last panel, at least for regular inks. All right, now, since that part's done, we do need to go back and fill in all those areas of spot black that we left till the end. And you can do that using a brush pen or a brush with ink, whichever you are more comfortable with. So I'm going to go ahead and use this large Kurataki brush because it has plenty of ink in it to fill in these spot blacks. And I may go back in and add the finer areas with this um, Kuratake. Alright guys, so our basic inks are finished for How to Meet a Martian. I'm going to let them fully dry overnight to help prevent ghosting. And ghosting is when you erase your inks and um, because of the graphite or maybe because they haven't fully cured, uh, the eraser picks up some of the black and leaves sort of a, a grayer tint behind. So to prevent ghosting, I'm going to let my inks dry overnight and um, I'll see you guys tomorrow for erasing and corrections. All right, guys, it's been 24 hours, so now we can erase, do special techniques, and uh, do corrections. And if you didn't bother to tighten your pencils any, or if you didn't need to tighten your pencils any, then you probably don't need to do this step. You can just move on to the next, but I did tighten my pencils, so I will come in here and erase. And I recommend you use a white vinyl eraser when you're erasing a pencil like this. It is less prone to pulling up your ink, which means you're going to have less issue, fewer issues with ghosting. And I explained to you guys earlier in the video what ghosting is. There are some inks that are more prone to looking gray just as there are some that are darker and richer. That was actually not a factor. I guess you guys could tell that when I picked what I picked. 
but it does seem like that Kuratake uh, brush fude pen, the double-sided one with the gray cap and the black cap. This one has some pretty rich um, blue-black ink. Sumi ink is another popular choice, as is India ink. You can even use black acrylic ink. But I don't recommend you use it with a brush, mostly because if it dries in the bristles, it can totally ruin your brush. Now we're gonna pull out a handy drafting brush. You can get these um, at many art supply stores. You can get them on Amazon. I got mine at Michael's many, many moons ago and I pretty much use it every day. Uh, it's just really handy for cleanly wiping away your eraser. And it's good with pencil because it's not gonna smudge the way using the side of your hand will. And it's like six bucks and they last forever. I had this one all through college, all through grad school. So uh, it's definitely a one-time investment unless you have a, pe a pet or a child who destroys your tools. Which is quite possible. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do with you guys is a splatter technique. So I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a splatter technique next. And you're gonna want some paper or very low adhesive scotch tape, that sort of thing, to mask off your area. Now, what we're going to be splattering is this here and this here, and then we'll add a hand-drawn star effect in these panels since they're so small and they have so many elements to them. I don't really feel like cutting out masking. You can also, also use, um, uh, graphics masking film, but the adhesive can be finicky sometimes, so I prefer just to use um, plain old tracing paper, because you can see what's underneath it. So the first thing I want to do is use a little bit of tape just to hold everything in place while I cut. So, and you actually don't have to cut over your paper you can uh, trace it. That's one of the nice things about tracing paper. You can trace it with a pencil and then move over to a different, better cutting surface if you so desire. I'm feeling lazy since this is a demonstration and I think I'm just gonna cut right here, especially since I have finished all my regular ink work. So um, if I nick the paper surface, it isn't the end of the world. And I'm just using some masking tape, which is also something you can mask with if you so desire, using some masking tape just to tape my paper down so it doesn't move while I work. And I'm using a small rotary cutter. I picked this up at Hancock's in their going out of business sale. It is a fabric rotary cutter, so it is sharp enough to do some damage. And I'm only gonna cut one edge on camera because I wanna get all up on top of this bad boy. But once the blade is exposed, you can very easily just run it along your ruler. You do wanna hold your ruler perfectly straight and it'll do an excellent job cutting. So um, if you don't like handling knives, um, this may be a great option for you, especially when it comes to straight lines. Once you've cut and removed your straight edges, you can use another type of blade. In this instance, I am using a swivel exacto blade, which is not my favorite because it does tend to swivel on me, but I have misplaced my good exacto blade. I'm a bad artist. It's a good thing I don't have kids. Because that would be a problem. Now I have a harder time manipulating this than I do um, a stationary blade. It tends to have a mind of its own for me. So I'm not recommending it. I'm just, that's what I'm using. And I'm sorry if I am all up in the camera. I promise I washed my hair. In fact, I just took a shower. So I am all clean and fluffy. But, you know, if my head gets all up in the camera. I apologize. Trying to see in my eyesight is terrible. All 
All right. Now you could use a little piece of scotch tape to mask your UFO. There we go. So next tool you want a gross old toothbrush that's been cleaned. You don't want toothpaste flicking onto your paper. Cup of water and white gouache, white ink, or in my case, Copic Opaque White. If I can get it open. Yes, I can. Dip your brush in your water. Dip your brush in your opaque white. Make sure you get decent coverage without it being too goopy. Tap off some of the extra. Now, what if you want some bigger stars? Well, leave that in there. It's not gonna get ruined. You want a big synthetic brush for this. So we're gonna use this Halcyon brush that I picked up at David Art Supply in New Orleans. And do the tap splatter effect, which may be easier for some of you if you don't have an old toothbrush just laying around. I actually kept one in my inking kit because I knew I was gonna need one. So we need to let that dry before we can really continue unless you wanna make a mess. So our splatter effect has dried and it's now time to remove the mask. And, you know, we hardly used any of this paper. So if you're working with a large sheet of tracing paper, you can opt to go over, um, continue using the sheet until it's wrecked. I want to reestablish those borders. So I'm gonna take my, now remove this tape, and I'm gonna take the calligraphy pen that I used. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I'm going back over things, cleaning them up a little bit. It's a really good way to add that finishing polish and make your pages really look done. And that's something I've struggled with because attention to detail is not always my strongest point I have ADHD so um, literally I have ADHD so sometimes I get so saturated with a project that the idea of spending more time on it when I'm oversaturated I, I just literally cannot see some of those things that need correcting um, and for me what helps is giving myself a couple days away from the project and then coming back to it. And in order to do that with tight deadlines, I have to get my work done as soon as it's given to me. That way I can give myself that refresher period. Or I will have someone else come, someone with fresh eyes who's not attached, come and give it a once over for me as well. And that's also really helpful. And that's why it can be great to cultivate a community of art friends, but it doesn't have to be art friends. It can just be, um, you know, even, even just, no I want to say normal, but art friends are normal friends. It can just be non-art friends who, uh, you know, like your work and they want to help you out and they're willing to spend the time to give something the once over. All right, so we talked about adding those stars. Fix a couple lines using a white signal pen because that fountain pen did, did bleed a bit. Let's just tighten it up a wee bit. Don't want to go in too much because there's only so much I can do anyway. And then we're gonna fix those windows that we accident well, that we blacked in earlier, but they didn't really turn out very well. And some artists really like jelly rolls. I really like the Unisigno in white. It gives a broader line. And since I'm heavy handed, you know, my mistakes are larger mistakes, maybe. So we're just gonna hand draw in some stars and they're not gonna look nearly as cute as those splatter stars, but 
Otherwise, we'd have a lot to mask. Go back up here. And fix some areas that were affected on the UFO. So I'm going to allow those to dry and then I may go back in and add some more stars. But while I'm at it, I'm going to add some curls to our main character's hair. It's another reason why we let the ink dry fully because you're going to get a better, more opaque mark than if your ink is still kind of wet. And that's going to come out as gray if it's still kind of wet. Oh, and then there's the smoke line here that I don't want to actually get rid of the roof entirely, but I'm going to narrow it a lot to make it look like you're seeing it through the smoke. And finally, I'm just going to tighten some of those curls up a little bit with my Fudego Kochi. I'm just sharpening the points a bit so it doesn't look so much like I, it was done with a ballpoint gel pen because that is what the signal is. It is a ballpoint gel pen. All right. I think we are done. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you will. Oh yeah, I have these things to, to fix. How could I forget? That's pretty easy though. Since everything is dried, we use that white signal. Just to sort of square those corners a bit. You really don't have to. You could clean that up in Photoshop or another graphics program if you wanted. But you know, nice clean originals. People do enjoy seeing that. Okay, so if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you, if you haven't yet, you check out the first part of this tutorial. It was recorded um, as sort of a, a precursor to the National Public Library Teen Center tutorial I did. Uh, both are available on YouTube at this point in time. Um, in the first, I go over coming up with a concept, scripting the concept, drawing thumbnails, creating roughs. So this was a continuation of that. Um, if you would like to see other types of comic inking demonstrated on this channel, leave me a comment and let me know. I can do a brush demonstration. I can do a nib demonstration. We can fight with tech pins all day if you guys want to see that. Just let me know what you're interested in seeing in the comments below. Now, um, if you're wondering how to drop these blue lines, I do have a tutorial for that on the blog at natosoup.blogspot.com. But the basic gist is after you scan it, convert it to grayscale, go ahead and go down to um, auto contrast and that's gonna bump it up for you already. Then go into adjustments curves and you're going to, there's gonna be two major peaks that should stand out to you. To the first peak, you wanna drop the graph line all the way to the bottom. And then at the start of the second peak, you're gonna to wanna to raise it all the way to the top. If this isn't clear, like I said, head on over to the blog. There are photos, there's explanation. I am working on a video tutorial. I'm just having difficulty capturing some of that footage. Um, I just saw something else I wanted to fix. See, fresh eyes. I had my eyes closed while I was doing the spiel, and as soon as I opened them, I was like, oh, I want to fix that. And if you haven't yet, I really do recommend you head on over to the blog because there's loads of great comic content over there and I'm working on creating even more. So if you're interested in comics or you'd like to learn about my experiences as a grad student at SCAD, that is definitely a place that you ought to check out. If you want to get in contact with me, you can leave a comment below. You can also try chatting me up on Twitter. I am very active on Twitter and I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, I just saw something else I want to fix. See? Fresh eyes. I want to add a white, if I can, a white line on the pan. Come on. Yeah. Try chatting me up on Twitter. 
But if you have any questions, I actually recommend you leave a comment on this video and I will get to them and help you out. By leaving a comment on the video, it gives me um, the context I need to properly answer your question. Sometimes when you guys ask me questions on Twitter and you don't link what you're talking about, I have to guess and I may not guess correctly. Told you, I just keep seeing stuff. Not a bad problem to have, not the worst problem to have. So if you like what I do and you wanna help me out, make sure you leave a like that lets YouTube know that you wanna see more of it. Make sure you share this video with your friends and family, anyone and everyone who you think might be interested in this sort of topic. Some people just enjoy watching these videos because they find them relaxing. Um, you sharing my work to your social networks helps me out a lot because it helps me expand my audience. And that is something I'm really trying to do right now. So that would be a great way to let me know that you enjoy my content. And uh, one of the bonuses is uh, it actually lets me know, I know when you guys share my stuff. So please retweet, reblog, share it to Tumblr, share it to Twitter, share it to your Facebook, and let people know how much you enjoy this content. Uh, the last way you can help me out is by heading on over to my Patreon and joining the community. And this will help me out financially. It'll allow me to make time for these sort of larger things. It'll help me make the time to volunteer to do panels because I don't always get compensated for that and I do usually provide the materials out of pocket. Um, it will allow me to dedicate time to editing videos, editing audio, etc. All of these are things that are very time consuming. Um, so if you enjoy this sort of content, that is a great way to help me out. But of course, you're not obligated to do that. Another way that you can help me and any other YouTuber whose work you enjoy is to make sure you watch or sit through or leave running at least 30 seconds of any ad that comes up. You don't have to watch more than that, but 30 seconds helps us out a lot. And who knows, you might see something you like. So go make a sandwich, go hit the bathroom, whatever you need to do. It is always appreciated. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today in the studio. Thank you guys so much for watching me make a comic or ink a comic. I hope you guys learned something. I hope I inspired you. I hope you walk away with a new skill that maybe you didn't have before. I'm Becca Hilburn from Natasoup Studio. As always, thank you for watching. Bye art nerds.